of the tenants that are available to us through these lost texts. If we were to go through all, at least the 45 books that we're aware of, and hone all the information down into those four tenants, and I just shared those with you. The first one says there's only one of us here. We're unity by nature. The second one reminds us that that unity consciousness is moving collectively toward this rare moment in history. The third one reminds us that we have direct access to the creative forces of our world. And the last one suggests that the science of compassion may be the most ancient science that allows us to gracefully transcend the great challenges of our life with grace. Well, two of those tenets I'd like to develop further. Well, one of those, it's the one that says there's only one of us here, that our consciousness is holographic in nature. The term hologram means different things to different people. Do we really understand the implications of what it means to live in a holographic consciousness? When I say the word hologram, what do I mean by that? Of the many definitions that we may choose for a hologram, perhaps one of the simplest and the most eloquent may be as follows. That a hologram is simply a pattern, a pattern that is whole and complete unto itself, and at the same time, it's part of an even greater pattern that is whole and complete unto itself, while at the same time is part of an even greater pattern. Now, this pattern can be non-physical energy, or it can be very physical matter. The cells of your body are holographic in nature. One cell has all the information it needs to create another one of you. It is whole and complete unto itself, and it's part of an even greater pattern that you call your body. Okay? Consciousness works this way. We are many expressions individualized of a unity consciousness. And what that means, and this is the beauty of the hologram, any place... Any place in the pattern of a hologram where you make one little change, that change is mirrored throughout the rest of the hologram. If you make one tiny change, it's mirrored throughout the rest of the hologram. Perhaps a good example, this is a story that's told from the Spanish journals when the explorers were coming over uh, looking for new routes into this world in the 14, 1500s. One of the routes took them around the coast of South America and the Spanish galleons that were making this journey, sometimes journeys took many months, up to a year. They set ashore for supplies in a place where the Spanish had never recorded being before. And they were met on the shores by the indigenous people of that area who apparently had never seen white people before had never seen Western technology before. And fortunately for this particular story, one of the first men to meet them on the shore was the shaman of the tribe. He was the holy man. So here the holy man of the tribe meets the Spanish as they're coming ashore. They left the large ships out on the water and they came ashore in smaller rowboats. And however they communicated in whatever language they were using, the holy man asked them, where did you just come from? I mean, they've been here for years. They've never seen people like this coming up onto their shore. And however they communicated in return, the Spanish said, we came on this little boat from that big boat with the wooden planks and the canvas sails out on the horizon of the ocean. And the holy man looked to where the Spanish were pointing, and he couldn't see that ship. The ship was there, and it was of a pattern that was so foreign to his frame of reference, it made no sense to his conscious recognition. He didn't recognize it. And as I hear this story, I often wonder, how many times does that happen in our world, in our lives? How many times do things happen right in front of us, and maybe we disallow it because it doesn't make sense in terms of our frame of reference? Is it possible there's a whole separate world going on here that we haven't recognized because we don't allow for it in our paradigm? Well, because this was a holy man, because he was a shaman, he was fascinated by the possibility that these people came from something that he couldn't see. So another individual may have dismissed it. The shaman worked with it. And eventually, what he said in a matter of moments, he says, you know, if I look out of the corner of my eyes and I squint just the right way and redefine the shape of my eyeball, I begin to make something out on the horizon. And in just a few moments, 
he taught himself how to see a pattern of matter that he had never been exposed to before. He taught himself to see that. That happened to him on the shore. Miles away was his village, and the people in his village didn't have the same experience that he had on the one hand, and within just a couple of days, on the other hand, they too benefited from his experience because they then were able to see what was happening on the shores. How did that happen? They weren't witnessing with him on the one hand. On the other hand, they learned through his experience. The term we use today is called collective resonance. And what it means to us is that every time one person chooses a new way to respond to the challenges of life, each time an individual chooses a new option, that person then becomes a living bridge for all the others who choose to follow in that person's path. It's not about imposing will on anyone. What it is about is that person now that chose a new way, that chose a new path, they have created a template of a new possibility very close to the consciousness of all others who choose to follow. And that template now becomes more accessible to the next and the next and the next. The shaman on the shore, he chose to see a new way and through collective resonance, others benefit from his experience. This is the beauty of the hologram. If we have a pattern, perhaps it looks like a snowflake pattern, and that pattern is whole and complete unto itself and part of an even larger snowflake, which is whole and complete and part of an even larger snowflake. And there is one place in each of these patterns where there is a little pointed tip and we take the tip off in one place of the snowflake. That tip no longer exists anywhere in the pattern. That's the beauty of the hologram. When a change occurs in one place, it's mirrored throughout the whole. It's mirrored throughout the rest of the system. What that means to us simply is this. Here we are on the threshold of a new millennium, creating a new paradigm, a new way to respond to the great challenges of life. We have lived in the world of polarity where we have hated and feared and judged and killed and we've always had the tools to rise above that hate and the judgment and the fear and the killing. Each time one individual chooses a new way to respond, chooses something other than hate, chooses something other than retribution. That's a big one in our culture now. If you do something, you've got to get even. You've got to pay for what you've done. It's not right, wrong, good or bad. It simply is a path and there may be the possibility of a higher path. Each time one individual chooses that possibility, it makes it easier for the next and the next and the next. So we ask ourselves, are we choosing to carry across this bridge into the new millennium, hate, judgment, warfare, and killing, or do we choose peace, forgiveness, compassion, and love, honoring all of the polarity that brought us to this moment? The hate, the killing, the judgment, the anger, the warfare has served us. It served us well. It thrust us onto a path so we would know ourselves in that way. And now we're invited to heal that path and to choose something new rather than judging the path, being angry at that path and moving on. That's the beauty of the holographic model of consciousness. That is why there's only one of us here. We're all going through that doorway together. No one is left behind. Everyone benefits from each choice that we make as we birth this new millennium.